So, what's going on? It's annoying, right? So, if no one talks like that, why do you play synths like that? Today, we're gonna use Centorial to demonstrate portamento and legato. Portamento means deportment, or how you carry yourself. It's also known as glide, and is used as a pitch envelope to connect between two intervals. It's usually used on leads and subs, or other monophonic parts. An example would be without portamento. Ooh, 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 ooh. But then with portamento, ooh, ooh. or if you were to make a fast time, ooh, 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 ooh. it'll give a whip sound. Or do you remember look right through? I forgot how it goes, but I thought he was using a pitch wheel, but no, he was using portamento because the pitch wheel you can only assign to maybe whatever you want, but then it's fixed. And to get in between ones, in between notes, it's almost like playing a theremin or something. Very difficult to get accurate. But if you have portamento, you can say, okay, that's exactly the note I want to play. Set your time and boom, flawless bends. Legato means bound in Italian and refers to the playing style. So the term legato is legato to the term portamento. And portamento could be a way of describing legato, but it's not. Confused? Don't be. Because by the end of this video, you'll be slurring and gliding like a mile high drunkard shredding down the powder. Hey, I'm Michael Carrillo, aka Hexspa. Welcome to my channel. I want to thank my subscribers and those of you who have clicked my links. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, then visit the description for more details. Now let's play Centorial. Okay, well it's been two years. Let's uh, get back into Centorial. This is going to be lesson 16, smooth and connected. We're going to be talking about portamento. I'm going to watch the lesson, and then I'll let you know what it's all about. All right. So what he's going on about here is you have mono and legato voice modes. Mono is just the key. The synth is only going to play one note at a time. In this case, it's like Massive has... Um, I think it's called Legato Triller, actually, where it does that behavior. Otherwise, it would just jump from here, G. And then when you release, um, even if you're holding G and release A, it, it would just, you'd end up with nothing then, okay? But every synth is a little bit different, so you end up with l what Massive would call Legato Triller, if that's what you use. Legato, on the other hand... You hear that it doesn't, um, hear how you're getting a little bit of a bend between them. That one's more, uh, cut off like the amp envelope is restarting and here it's not. So basically with mono, each of these envelopes is going to trigger every time you play a note. So let's do like a short attack, um, with a quick decay and release. Uh, sustain and release, okay. Even though I'm holding down uh, B and playing B and A, every single note is triggering um, an amplitude, kind of a, a raise with an immediate um, decay to, to zero. Right, but watch if I do legato. I'm now playing through the envelope, you could say. So let's um, let's raise the decay time. You see what I mean? As opposed to this. So as long as I hold the key down, the envelope is going to continue through its uh, time and level based uh, parameters.
every time I hit a key, it's starting over. But with legato, you're playing like through the envelope, I guess you could say. So let's... Um, uh, go to just basically like an on-off trigger with the amp envelope, and then you can hear it with the filter as well. With mono, every single time, let's bring it down. And then... Um, Let's bring it so it'll jump up. That's the envelope amount. So every time I hit it, it, the attack time within zero milliseconds going to basically however much up as uh, set by the envelope amount. And by the decay time, it's going back down to its resting place, which is here, the sustain level. Um, now with mono... Whether I hold a key or don't hold a key, every single time I hit a note, that's going to make the envelope start from... It's basically going to make it re-trigger, okay? But with legato, it's just going to jump up, and I'm going to be playing through the envelope, basically. Or, you know, even if I um, raise this a little more and then bring the sustain up a little bit so it's... oh. Okay, I don't get that option. <laughs> it's just going to come back down. That's fine. Maybe, uh... Let me bring this off. See what I mean? As opposed to this. So, it depends what you want. Do you want individual uh, envelopes happening? Or do you want sort of a sweeping gesture? And that's when you're going to start to get into legato. Um... It's also going to relate to how the notes bend. We'll probably see that um, here in Portamento. But at least with legato, you're seeing that you're using those overlaps to control how these envelopes respond to your playing. Whether they re-trigger for every note in mono, or whether you're playing through the envelopes. Okay, that's legato. So uh, let's go do this challenge. So we're obviously, we're obviously in legato mode because when you when he hits the second note, you can hear it's um, the envelope is still moving. Let's let him play it. So we know that the release time is very short. But I let me play my own notes.
pretty close. So it's probably mono, you know, but uh, let me play. Yeah, it's definitely mono, see? It's got an attack on it. You see what's going on here? He basically just raised the volume to give a little bit more punch. I don't hear any filter. No, oh, well, I didn't hear that because I'm on a mix cube, whatever. Kind of forgot that I left it on. No problem. That's just, listen, the difference here is very small. Like, if you can hear that, you're probably, I don't know. I'm not very sensitive to high frequencies, and this is not a big deal. And I forgot, but it's okay. All right, so he's got a little punchy filter, and it doesn't... And uh, it's mono, because every single time I hit a note, it's triggering that. So we got to bring the filter down and then we got to create a little tick. That's it, just a little beep, you know? So it's, the envelope is going to, by this amount, okay, it's going to go from the uh, cutoff frequency, it's going to go up by just a little bit, okay, that's the envelope amount. The envelope starts from where the little knob is set. So within zero milliseconds, it's going to jump up a little bit and then come back down the sustain level, which is zero, and that's exactly where it was. And because the release is so short, it doesn't really matter about our filter release that much. Because here it's set to 15 milliseconds, and the most we can bring it up is there. So it doesn't matter. Okay, that's pretty much it. And then let's listen if it was legato. See, the filter envelope would do its thing, and then it would hang out at the sustain level. Because our, our amp envelope is going to stay sustained. If we were to bring that down, it would just decay right away to zero. Okay. But it's up, so we're going to hang out here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, did, did I did I miss? <laughs> I left it on there. No problem. I knew that. All right. Obvious legato. Okay. You know, otherwise it would go Donald Duck each time. Sustain is zero. But 
but it's uh, got a little attack time. Wow. <laughs> Does it make sense? Um, we're getting that wank, wank. It's like a wah, or, you know, this is almost like uh, in the look right through song. You're getting a little bit of a womp, wee, wee, like a wee sound. And that's because of this filter. Your mouth is, your lips are like a filter. So it's like filter closed, wah, wah, wah. Your filter opening over time. It's not just bop, you know, it's not like an immediate attack. Okay, so it's going to go up. A little more than usual. Nothing. A little bit. Hear how that's a little darker? A little too dark. And then... Here is his is a little darker. It's an amp envelope. It's swelling. It's not filtering. Okay, so we got to bring this up to bring the sustain level uh, over time, or the amp, the attack to the sustain. Too much. Kind of wondering, uh, is he using a filter there? I don't hear any difference. Very obvious legato, okay, with a nice long um, decay. Let's listen to it again. Actually, the decay is pretty is shorter than the attack, so bring that up. Bring this one. I don't know if it's that. It's here. Ooh. You can hear he's got a little resonance. Hear the little uh, overtone. Mine doesn't have it. Okay, his is going up a little faster than mine. And then we got to bring this down too. Oh, I got to bring this up. All right, his is slower. Okay, my decay is too fast, or is it? No. We gotta, we gotta turn the click on. close right Let's see There's no way it's 10, 10 seconds. 
Yeah, no way. Okay, not it's probably not two. No. All right, that's probably it. So we had, um, you know, kind of like a long swell. He's a keyboard player. I'm still learning, so. Uh, and then without the resonance Jesus Christ. He's got more of a, a snap to it, and that's here. No, it's not like self oscillating or anything. <laughs> Hear how that, that whistle comes in sooner? That's because the resonance is there. Okay. Yeah! Hmm. Hopefully that made sense. Legato makes you play through the envelope. Yep, and you're gonna be using your amp and your filter, so just listen to the difference. Okay, so the last one was Legato, which had to do with overlapping um, when you play or program your MIDI. You know, um, pretty much you're gonna play through your filter. Your filter's uh, not gonna re-trigger until it gets a break in the continuity, all right? Now, we're gonna be talking about uh, portamento, which is related, I guess, because it can, it's almost like another, uh, envelope. Okay. It is, it's, um, but for now it's just going to be, it's going to automatically connect two notes. So here they're discrete, but if we were to bring up some glide time, depending on what you call it, it could be portamento glide, depending on your synth, it's going to connect the two. See how it went down? It went down because the last note was higher. All right. Now the last note was the same, so it doesn't do anything. But if I come up from, if I play higher, it's going to ramp up. Okay, let's go back. Where were we? Here. Now if I play a lower note, it goes down and then the same note, up. And then I play a higher note. Now it's going to come down. Okay. Basically, it's just dragging its butt. All right, that's portamento. If you go longer, okay, as opposed, let's go high again, and then let's go shorter. Like he was saying, it's, it's just like a whip at that point, so if you're going to play a uh, It's just going to give a little bit more attitude as opposed to something like this. That is, um, you know, maybe just distorts the pitch a little, which is neat if you want something wonky. Just up to you. But that's what Portamento does. It's your friend. You, a lot of people like to use it with 808s. Um, well, you wouldn't want to. Well, you would use... Um, like a legato glide, and I think we're gonna get into that. So, but if, if you stay low, um, I don't have access to the filter with this little um, screen here. It's just isolating this, so can't really help you. But yeah, a lot of people will use this in their subs to sort of smooth it out. You know how you can get clicks when you use uh, sine waves for 808s or whatever. Portamento, or uh, yeah, it can help you with that. Okay.
all we're going to do is just set this time here. So. Try slower. Nope, his is longer. Try longer. See, it's a little bit more sharp. Okay, you get that? Uh, you know, it's between the two notes, 300 milliseconds, so obviously it's going to move slower in the in interpolation between like a semitone as opposed to an octave got farther to go but it's still going to take the same amount of milliseconds let's see if we can prove that with a really big stretch see Here, that one almost sounds like a scoop. As opposed to this. It's almost like an S curve, whereas uh, that one's really slinky. Is that whip he was talking about? Like a pitch envelope, almost like a kick, you know? Let's see. Yeah. If you want to do a sawtooth kick, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, a lot of kicks will have this choo on it. All right, so now we're going to combine the functions of legato, which is playing through the sort of... Uh, modulator which could be uh, an adsr envelope or in this case like a a simple uh, portamento control that's a modulator so um yeah mono is going to be a little bit more choppy okay okay even if we bring this up But if we bring up legato, see how I just bent, as opposed to mono. It's still bending between the two because we brought the portamento up. But legato, with a break, there's nothing. Okay, legato is going to be a little bit smoother, and it's only going to happen when you're actually um, playing in legato fashion. So like he said, 
in this particular synth, Legato will give you a smoother transition, um, and it'll only happen when you're playing in that overlapped or programming in that overlapped state. Okay. Um, obviously, you're going to have a hard time doing this if you program things with like a step sequencer, but you could nudge things around and make that happen. You know, I know in Machine you can do that, uh, you know, or in a DAW, obviously, but a hardware thing, you know. I'm not sure how that would work, but yeah, obviously like this in Massive, this is called Legato Triller, how that works, and this would be like Glide or whatever in there, so it's just the names are different, but the functions are the same, okay? All right, let's uh, answer some questions. All right, let's just figure out what he's doing. So it's Legato, we know because, look... If I play with a break, there's nothing, okay? But then when I play overlapped, there is. Mm, so how much time is that? A little slower. Not quite that much. It's punchy. Makes me think it's mono, but let's play it. It is mono because even when there's a break, there's still some. Okay? So not too long. Legato, because when there's a break, there's nothing happening. But then when we play overlapped, there's a little bit of a whip. legato because it's smooth okay yeah! Yeah! what style of playing does legato refer to loud and cantankerous no it's smooth and connected like when you sing or when you play guitar even guitar, where this, you know, you're skipping strings, you should make it seem as though it's flowing. Easier said than done, but, or even piano, right? All the keys are completely disconnected. But you can still play in a legato fashion, so it's smooth and connected. Short and detached is staccato, loud and cantankerous would be like fortissimo, and quiet and sweet would be pianissimo. So it's a little bit different. Playing overlapping notes in legato mode prevents which part of the synth from starting over? It's the envelopes, okay? Uh, but it could also be LFO, you know? Um, probably not delay because that's sort of like an independent, it's not really a modulator, and unison is not really a modulator, but LFO is a modulator, and in some synths you, you may uh, be able to re-trigger the LFO, <coughs> you know, uh, via legato. Okay, but in this synth, uh, it's envelopes. And portamento, which is, n it's kind of an envelope, right? It's a pitch envelope uh, controlled by your legato, okay? It's just like, um, a zero, it's a zero sustain level, and the attack time, well, it's, it's uh, the attack and decay are, mm, it's just... Not really sure. Let's let's think about it. So if you go from low to high, what? Yeah, it's it's kind of like a pitch envelope, but it's it would be like inverted in that sense. When you go from low to high, when you go from high to low, ew. It's uh like a zero attack, and then um, the milliseconds is just your decay. So yeah, it's an envelope, but it's funky. Okay, that's legato, obviously. Otherwise, that's an amp envelope. 
um, playing in legato mode. See how he's playing through the fil through the envelope. Okay, yeah, it's it's not a filter. It's an amp envelope. He's playing inside of it. Okay, it's legato. Hear how every time he hits a note, the the filter envelope is starting over. That's a filter creating that. You know, it's got that nasal kind of resonance, and uh, it's a filter. Yeah. So it's mono. Okay, because the the filter. I mean, uh, yeah, the filter envelope is applied to each individual event, mono, like every one, okay? As soon as you hear more notes happening and no filter or anything changing, it's legato, every time. It's a cool effect. How is portamento different in legato voice mode versus mono voice mode? Um, legato does not make it move faster or slower. It does let you choose uh, which notes portamento affects because uh, if you play legato, the portamento works in this particular synth. And if you uh, play detached, then it won't. Legato forces portamento on every note? No. That would be mono for this particular synth. No. This sound is not using portamento. There is no bends. He never, well, he never plays overlapped. So I guess he could be playing portamento. It could be portamento when he's just not playing legato. But for all intents and purposes, I don't hear any bending. Do you? No. Yeah, this is legato with portamento because when he plays detached, there's no bend. But when he plays in an overlapped legato fashion, there is bends. Listen again. Yeah. Yes. There's portamento and it's legato mode. Hear how smooth it is when he's playing? There's it's not it's not just portamento, but it's also portamento and legato. Yeah! All right. Here comes the challenge. All right, so I'm gonna start this recording, but I'm also gonna pause it. So hopefully this works, and I'll just unpause <clears throat> once I get the answer to each one, okay? Let's see. All right, this patch, um, you know, the first one, they mix them up, but pretty much we have a square wave. Well, here, let's listen to the fourth octave. Got a sub oscillator, okay? And then you hear the filter moving. Listen. There's like a little... Hear it? No resonance. And then remember to listen for the portamento. Obviously, this is a portamento lesson. So... I like to check in different octaves. Sounds pretty close to me. Okay, so that's your first one. I don't hear any reverb or anything. Let me check with headphones real fast. Did I get that wrong? Okay. Well, there you go. Pretty close. Okay, I think I figured this one out. This one was tricky. It almost sounds like unison or something. Like detune. That's I was trying that. Um, but actually, 
It's pulse width. Okay. Listen without it. Right, and imagine I, I try to detune it. Or if I try like a different waveform here. It's close. But then you get to those low octaves and it doesn't make sense. So it's definitely a uh, pulse width with no detune. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? And then it's got a uh, legato. But, um... But it's got no portamento. Make sure you listen for that low cutoff. Sounds right to me. Let's see how close we are. That one was hard, man. I'm telling you. You had to get the little whip here for the filter, but the pulse width, you know, that was uh, pretty crazy. And then the rate was pretty slow. So that's patch two. Okay. In this third patch, we had a bunch of little things to tweak. I'm not hearing nothing with the filter here. We obviously hear that there's delay. It sounds like you know there's a unison or something going on and there is it's a four voice unison with a moderate detune and some spread you can hear that it's a stereo sound the start button is off because listen to the the phasiness of the these uh these voices which is really just uh for like four oscillators okay Now, if I was to turn the start button on, that would restart the uh, the the phase of all the oscillators um, at zero, and it'll give you uh, sort of like this retrigger effect. And that's not. This is almost like a hmm, you know, like a synthy. It's all synth stuff, right? But yeah, much better. And um, I didn't feel like we had to, to change this. Because we are still getting a little bit of a tick, okay? And then obviously we have the voice, the portamento. Okay, it's not longer, it's not shorter. This was a, a big juggle between the the mix, the decay, uh, well, the feedback of the delay. Um, there was no spread because we already have the spread here and the volume. That was the main thing, okay? It's a very obviously a saw sound. Okay. Very cool. But you hear how it's similar to almost like the pulse width from uh, the LFO pulse width modulation, obviously, but with a saw. You know, sometimes I think you could do pulse width with, uh, with saw even in some synths like the uh, Dave Smith or sequential stuff. But with this, it's pretty basic. So I think this is the patch. Let's check. Yeah! Fantastic. Let's move on to number four. Okay, this fourth patch was pretty straightforward. Um, immediately, you'll notice that there's some reverb. Let me turn my monitors on. Reverb, right? And you hear there's a little swirl. Where do swirls come from? They come from doubling and detuning. It happens with unison. You know, obviously unison is doubling and detuning, but you're going to get two different ways to do it. And in this case, I believe he did it with the oscillators themselves. I believe we have a symmetrical detune 
Okay, I think whenever he's doing this, doubling and detuning, he's always having the mix at 50%. Okay. Um, so, in this case, I felt like it was uh, one cent sharp and one cent flat. You, that's the only option. You can only go sharp with the oscillator one and flat with oscillator two. You can hear that's a very slight difference. Yeah, I feel like that one's a little slow. Like it's it's not really uh, moving as much. Well, it's one or the other. Maybe it's uh, this one's zero and this one's one. Just a slight swirl. If you can hear the difference here, listen. Yeah, so this one, that it doesn't have that warble, okay? And you'll also notice that we're not getting a, a tick on every onset. It's just similar to the last patch. See so yeah, how this one's kind of, it almost sounds like a legato, right? Because in that sense, you're playing through the difference of the oscillator phases. Because they're both free running. Okay, so uh, we, we have legato. And the time was set to 25 milliseconds. Okay, got the reverb, just a very small size. Just mixed in a very small amount. It's a little dry, okay. And the filter's down. And the resonance is up. It's hard to tell sometimes because the start but you know, you play with it and then you'll, you'll get a different effect. Okay, it's got that kind of phaser effect because indeed these oscillators are out of phase. All right, I think that's close. And close is as close as you need to get. It doesn't need to be exact unless you're trying to join Duran Duran or, you know, what's that other huge um, Depeche mode <laughs> and trying to recreate all their synth patches exactly. But I think overall you're going to get a lot just by getting pretty close. How close was I? Let's find out. Yeah! See, uh, a lot of the reason I'm teaching this here sharing it is because i already went through it once i don't remember any of these like now you'll be able to see in the video metadata that i haven't done this for two years but of course i've been using audio stuff so kind of once you understand the fundamentals of audio synthesis is not any different you know you, you can have lfos in your daw to create modulation it can be in your plugins you know, a saw wave is just like any kind of waveform, and if they're out of tune or out of out of phase or inverted polarity, you're going to get very similar results. Okay, so uh, let's go on to patch five. Okay, this patch was uh, pretty fun. What are we hearing? The first thing I noticed was that the amp envelope is swelling in, so I raised it to about two seconds, 
two and a half seconds actually. And then we also noticed that um, there's a trail. It's not fading out immediately and that's partially due to the delay. Okay, you can definitely hear that there's echoes. Um, if you play two notes sequentially with legato, you'll know that there's um, also portamento. That makes the, dec the decay a lot more obvious. Um, we also can hear, especially in the lower octaves, that there is a, 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 a transposed oscillator. Listen. There's a clear uh, perfect fifth sound happening, and it's actually um, an octave and a fifth. So I guess it's a fifteenth. And it's um, it, it's a narrow narrow pulse wave, which sounds similar to uh, a sawtooth. Let's listen to the difference. Here's with the narrow pulse. And with the saw. Back to the pulse. They're pretty similar, I guess, um, but they're different. Okay, also the filter cutoff is down slightly with the resonance up. Let's listen to it with no resonance. Okay, let's give him a little bit more character. Listen. And I took the trouble to go all the way here up to the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th octave to listen for this cutoff. If you listen, um, listen to the squeal here, um, because the note is sustaining, okay? So I'm going to hold the note down. Then here. Now listen what happens if I turn the cutoff all the way up. Here's the patch. You're not getting quite as much squeal at the top. You might think, well, who cares? Well, true. But the idea is to get the patch as precisely as possible. So that's what you have to do. Try the different octaves. You can go down to four, three, two, the first octave which if you consider middle C to be C4, then, or C3, then that would be the zero octave. But I call this the first octave. C1. F1. And let's compare the saw waves. I think that's really where these uh, pulse waves come into their own. All right, let's see how close I got. Okay, I was wrong about the filter. Let's let's go back and listen. Let me flip over to my other monitors. Let's listen to that real quick.
Let's compare it to what we had. Okay, very subtle difference. I was I was wrong about that, but you could hear how up top there was a similar effect. And it's a pretty similar sound. But uh there you go. Pretty good. And to the last one. Okay, and for the final recording, or sorry, for the final patch, um, let's listen. There's some reverb. Let me turn my monitors up. Oops. One second. Okay. So there's some reverb. Blended in very slightly 10% and a slightly bigger size than minimum this one's tricky because the start is off and it's doubled and detuned so this is a square wave and we have plus and minus three cents um, the start button is definitely off and the attack is definitely at zero milliseconds if we go up to the top octave. But then if I bring up the attack to two milliseconds to remove the, the click, big difference. So that's how I ended up with that. The filters all the way up. It's as close as I'm going to get. So, yeah, I think that's it. Mono. Here. Okay. Let's see how close I got. Excellent. Over to you, Mike. Did you watch the whole thing? God damn, you're dedicated. Hopefully you're more clear on how portamento and legato are related, but different. Portamento is a glide, whereas legato is a performance trigger. Portamento usually is assigned to a single pitch envelope, whereas legato can be assigned and is often assigned to amp envelope, filter envelope, or even things like LFO. These techniques should be used in conjunction with more staccato playing styles to create development and contrast in your compositions. So if you like this video, be sure to get more by visiting the description. On your way there, you can click the like button, hit subscribe, find the link to the article I wrote on this topic, find some affiliate links on the gear that I use and recommend, and you can find a PayPal donation link through which you can make video requests. In the next easy synth programming video, we'll explore a special new oscillator, the triangle wave. I'm Hexpa, peace.